Welcome to rule nine. In this section, we will talk about when the ball is in play and out of play. There are situations in which the ball remains in play. For example, if the ball rebounds from a goalpost, crossbar, or corner flag, the ball is still in play. The ball is also in play until a referee sounds the whistle. On a drop ball, the ball is in play when it touches the ground. The whistle is one of our key tools we use during the game. Using your whistle lets the players know when to start play. It must be used in the following areas of play, such as a kickoff, a penalty kick, after a substitution has been made, after showing a yellow card for a caution, or showing a red card for disqualification, for an injury, after setting a wall prior to a free kick, and it's also a good idea to blow the whistle when you conduct a drop ball. Remember, the ball is in play when the ball touches the ground when conducting a drop ball. Here we will discuss when the ball is out of play. To help us determine this, we will look at the goal line and touch lines along the field. For the ball to be completely out of play, the entirety of the ball must cross the goal line or touch line. Here, we see these two balls are still in play as a portion of the ball remains on the touch line. This ball is in play as it remains on the field. Now let's review. A ball is in play when it rebounds from a corner flag, a goal post, or a crossbar. Here, we see the ball rebounding from a corner flag post and therefore is still in play. This ball is out of play as it has completely crossed the goal line. Soccer field is normally shared with other sports, such as football. The football post shown here is an outside agent that can interfere with play. If the ball touches the football crossbar or uprights, play is dead. You will restart with either a goal kick or a corner kick, depending on who last touched the ball. If a defender touched the ball last and it crossed over the goal line, you will restart with a corner kick. If an attacker last touched the ball that crossed over the goal line, then you will restart with a Goal kick. The ball may accidentally touch an official during play. If this happens, the official should blow the whistle to stop play. A team should not gain an advantage when the ball touches the referee and stays on the field. This includes if it goes into the goal, if it starts a promising attack, and if it goes to an opponent. As seen here, the attacker in white has kicked the ball and it hit, the ball has hit the official. It has rebounded to a defender, which has allowed the defender to gain an advantage. You'll restart with the drop ball to a player of the team last in possession at the spot where it was last touched by a player, an outside agent, or a match official. When a drop ball is administered, the ball goes to one of the players of the team that last possessed the ball. The ball is dropped where it was last touched by a player, an outside agent, or a match official. Unless the ball was in the penalty area, or the last touch by either team was in the penalty area. All players of both teams must remain at least four yards from the ball until it is in play. Remember, the ball is in play when it touches the ground. If play is stopped and either the ball or last touch by either team was in the penalty area, then the drop ball is given to the defending team's goalkeeper. All opposing players must be outside the penalty area and all players must be at least four yards from the ball. The referee should not throw the ball to the goalkeeper, but rather drop the ball. The referee should also position themselves to see as many players as possible and be out of the passing lanes.